and then the fundies. And right now, all these years later, I can't really remember why the fundies were such a big event, why they were so riled up that year, and it's sort of funny. I'm a fundamentalist Christian, and yet here come the fundies, you know, but I'm so, it made me so proud of being gay because we were happy and they were scathing and said God's going to send us to hell and so on and so forth. And I remember that there was a meeting before the parade and rally, this big meeting at MCC. And they, we were discussing, you know, what should we do about the fundies? They're planning on showing up 200 of them or 300 and going to, you know, yell at us and all that kind of stuff. And I quietly stood up and raised my hand and I said, you know, what about a buffer zone in between us and these marching people. And it was just a little suggestion. And what I was mainly concerned about was confrontation. I'm big on um, first appearance. I'm big on that we get our message across in a peaceful, loving kind of a way. And I didn't want the news media to show confrontation. I remember after I came home so proud of watching the march in 79 or 80, or maybe it was the first parade in 81, you know, th that was through Balboa Park. And I was so proud, and I read the San Diego Evening Tribune the next day, and it said, oh, the Gay Pride Parade was uh, the day before, and they had 3,000 people. And it showed one picture, and it was one guy leading another guy around in a dog chain or something. And that was their depiction of of the Gay Pride Parade. And so I'm thinking, wait, this is 84. I don't want to have this wonderful parade and all the effort that we've done for our 10th anniversary and all they're going to show is a confrontation. So my little suggestion, wouldn't you know, the creativity in our community is wonderful. Someone took that and turned it into the Fundy Fighters. And these were a group of volunteers and I have a picture of us here uh, marching from uh, the rally beforehand to march up and stand between them. The Fundy Fighters stood out about uh, 10 feet or so out on the sidewalk. The police were there with their horses and we stood between. Well, here we're down there and the parade starts and someone else suggested, hey, when the, all the parade contingents, when they get down there, right before they get there, we're going to blow a whistle. And as soon as we blow the whistle, everyone turn your head. So here's the Fundies. Here's the Fundy Fighters, our peaceful people with their backs to the Fundies, all the Fundies yelling and all this kind of stuff, and we turn our head and <laughs> don't even look at them. We don't even give them any attention at all. What a great way to piss off a Fundy. I mean, they were outrageous, and yet we showed only smiling, only happy, only peaceful people. This is, I, it was a very proud moment of that whole Fundy thing. <clears throat> um, and to sum up another uh, thing, in 84, you know, uh, you, you always take a few days off beforehand and you're just absolutely exhausted. I remember um, in 84, I probably didn't sleep for two days beforehand. You're, you get calls at four in the morning, you're out doing things, you're delivering things, you're at fundraisers, you're meeting different people. You know, um, I was in charge of the festival and, and one of the, the, the booth rentals, they couldn't get their, their booth set up in time and I had to go down there and work electricity. You know, it's just nonstop. So it was the rally. It was before, um, I think back then, correct me if I'm right or wrong, uh, John, but we had the parade and then they emptied into the rally area. And so you had the rally there and, and I have a picture of it actually, I brought in, I was able to find. And the stage was all set up and it was a big flag behind and it was a wonderful setting and as a board member I was up there with Nicole and all these other people. And all these people were out there and the keynote speaker was not there. And Nicole turns to me and says, David, do something. These guy, people are going to start leaving unless we do something. I said, well, what do you want me to do? And he said, we'll do anything. So I got up there and it came to my mind. I said, would you all stand and let's sing the Star Spangled Banner? And here my horse throat and stuff. But we all sang, thousands of people, the Star Spangled Banner. And wow, still brings, <laughs> still brings chills. That's what appeared the next day in the paper, was a photographer behind me looking out at all of these people and we're all singing the Star Spangled Banner. It was, like I said, I never wanted to be in the limelight, but there were certain times when you're just thrust into that. What a wonderful way to end our uh, 1984 experience, the Fundy Fighters uh, being on the festival. So after 84, I said, hey, I've done three years of pride. I've given my effort 24 hours a day. I'm gonna take some time off.